Yeah, greetings and salutations, all you gorgeous individuals. Welcome inside. It is Lee Guy Unlock, Eric Mark here with you, Buttes, for a little day two quarterfinal action. And we, listen, you got the two top seeds from the two premier regions in the world, and they delivered. We get what I'm going to call the best game of the tournament so far. I'm I'm willing to to let it the series have the best game of the tournament so far. I, I think when you're talking about number one LCK versus number one LPL, it's something like only the third or fourth time in history that we've ever gotten this type of matchup at Worlds, and both of them swung like first seeds from their respective regions. Heavyweight bout in this one. Didn't go the full five games. Didn't get the silver scrapes, of course, but still delivered on the excitement, delivered on the potential skill of both of these teams. Yeah, and we got to jump right into that banger game. It was the clincher, 40 minutes. Game four started with kind of a wacky dive that took 45 seconds for them to even slowly put Bin's Jax behind, and you know a uh, match point getting Bin on Jax is already a terrifying prospect, but this, this game was all about back and forth. Insane team fighting. I can't remember a game in recent memory that highlighted individual mechanics from multiple players across the board in this game from Peanut interrupting Kaisa Alties a couple times on Elk to then Elk recovering from that and, you know, single-handedly dragging BLG to some of these team fight wins. And there was a clear indication that there was a change in the priority in the strategy of this series heading into that game four. It was an identification that, you know what, whether you believe he's up to the task or not, Doran was struggling against Bin, and it was a priority to try and set that lane in a proper state, in a stable position for the rest of Gen G. I'm sorry, excuse me, Hanwha Life then to be in that position to be healthy in these later team fights mid to late game they were healthy but it was not enough of a difference because as you laid out yes you did also set behind elk a little bit in that bottom lane he finds a way to get the items he needs and once he has those items he is that damage threat in these team fights and the individual mechanical execution in these team fights specifically the huge one around baron that is where Elk shines. Yeah, 1v3, and he's uh, almost coming away with a triple kill. Ends up just dying in the aftermath to Zekka Silas, by the way, who he's dancing on, sidesteps a couple of the chains on that one. But this this comp out of BLG, obviously we know uh, Jun is a kindred one pick, or one trick, but him being able to pull it out with this Galio out of night, this was, I mean, you heard the cast talk about it five, six, seven years ago. This looks like a super meta comp, but now it's it's a little bit off meta. I know the Galio's been picked, but uh, it was a, enough of a spice in this match point that uh, BLG able to come away with the win against on. It was absolutely the right time to play that card of this what is a traditional composition at this point uh, feeling untraditional from what we have seen throughout the meta but getting that galio pick was a big one for me it's one that we've talked about throughout this year as something that has been kind of bubbling up to the forefront of meta status being close to that type of territory and i don't think we've quite seen it utilized to the full extent by some of these professional teams this is a great example right here on what he can provide. And I think we even got the extra fireworks of having Silas and Calio get the double ultimates coming through. Yeah, a couple times they were even synced up, you know, uh, Zekka and Knight really on the same page on that one. But uh, then when you look at this series kind of as a whole, especially that mid lane, because Silas was kind of the priority throughout this series from the, I think it was the very first game. It was boom, Insta first picked coming over. Uh, for the Hanwha life side of things. Zekka was great in that first game. And then something like the Ari that we know the win rate's insane for night, but Ari was zero and three in this series. Very surprising to see that come through with it. And I think that was also partly, again, the strength of the, of the compositions that were coming through on the day and what we saw from that one. Ari not having that success, really, when you look at the individual matchups, right? You're looking at those lanes by lane. 
is a bit surprising. Is definitely one of these concerns under these eyebrow raises. And I think a lot more people should be putting Silas on their radar for this event. You know, we've talked so much about banning out the Yone. Yone being this premier pick. Silas can do a lot of those things too. And especially given what type of counter he can present into some of these other champions, you know, these traditional mages in the mid lane and some of these big time ultimates that are available. Silas is, is definitely a pick that I would be prioritizing and starting to open my eyes a little bit more to if I'm some of these other teams at the event. Especially now because we're seeing a pick like the NAR be at the very top of priority for top laners. Obviously one of the more disgusting ulties that a Silas can steal. But, you know, this third game was had some back and forth. The bands, again, were interesting because you get Viper ending up on a Zeri. The Kaisa gets banned. The Twitch which fully feels like uh, something's going on in Scrim's ban. I know we saw Pays play it earlier in this tournament, but it felt like, especially in that game four, Viper on Misfortune didn't have the urgency that a guy like Elk on Kaisa did, who again, completely took over that game. But I think the standout story when you look at this series as a whole was unfortunately a massive top lane can. And we were worried about that heading into this head-to-head uh, -head and what was going to be able to happen. We thought that maybe, you know, you'd be able to get Viper some of these priority picks, get him into this matchup against Elf to really show, again, you know, you, you've jumped up in the LPL, but a big part of that is because there was room to jump in the LPL because Viper had left and, and that type of gap that he left at that ultra high end for the ADCs, Elk delivered on it that uh, that wasn't a disadvantage or any type of gap situation whatsoever in fact it was more or less an advantage for the side of blg and yes the one that we feared the most been in that top side was a disaster for hanwha life throughout this whole series doran i think you know not necessarily a bad performance by him but not nearly good enough to get to the level that Bin was at and the level of contribution that he's able to have with the team and that threat that he represented out on the Rift, not even close to being equaled by anybody, let alone Doran out on the Rift by Hanwha Life. Except for game two. Game two at Adoran was just bad. <laughs> no way around that one. But, I'll take that. Uh, and how about, you know, we got to put some respect for a guy who was benched for a good chunk of summer. Jun has come in, got pretty much all the starts here at the World Championship. And Peanut had a good series on the day too. You know, last year we were leaving Worlds thinking Peanut, man, he kind of choked it. But Peanut played at a high level across this whole series. And Jun met him at that level. I think a lot of people, unfortunately, kind of on the side of, of Peanut and, and, you know, the Hanwha Life thing are going to dismiss everything that had been gained this year for Hanwha Life, the way that they rose up from, you know, middle of the pack to that elite tier status in the LCK, dethroning Gen G, the defending back to back to back to back to back to a million backs finals type of situation in the LCK. And then to disappoint here in this matchup to have not the ultra high level of showing compared to a blg and compared to a player like jun as you said someone who has been on the bench for a lot of the success a lot of this resurgence rebounding re-establishing of blg as that top team in the lpl he's come through and he's delivered at this event i think that this is still one of those ones where you got to be prepared for either one of these guys stepping into the day in the moment for the for blg but today Jun, for the most part, all very good. And this this whole series really reminds me of way back now, the KTIG series in 2018, where KT, you get unfortunate drawing an IG squad as I think they were a two seed then in the quarterfinals. We saw this draw uh, and thought this is way too early to be a quarterfinals matchup. So on paper, it looks like Honda Life leaving in quarters. Wow, what a choke job for the top seed from the LCK. They got the brutal draw. And at the end of this tournament, I feel like you're still probably feeling like Han was a top four team at this event. Yeah, I, 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 it hasn't necessarily changed how I feel about them in the global picture, right? A global power ranking type of situation. Yes, the tournament result is going to be unfortunate, seeing that it is only a quarterfinals appearance uh, for Hanwha Life. It is that reality that you realize. Again, it is luck of the draw type of situation all the way through. You can go through Swiss stage. You can go through these parts where you're in the knockout rounds. 
and it is about who you draw, what type of situation you're in. It doesn't matter that you got that first seed from the LCK. You still got the first seed from the LPL when it came down to do or die. It's the way things go. And unfortunate for Hanwha life, again, just like KT Roaster, you don't remember them at that type of point losing in the quarterfinals. You only remember IG making it all the way through to the big dance and taking it all. And now the BLG War Machine is fully rolling ahead. The one and two start a very distant memory and fresh off of destroying Weibo in the LPL playoffs. You're feeling like it should easily be a Weibo win going back to last year. <laughs> but, uh, you got Life and Elk who unironically might be the two best performing AD carries at this event right now. Yeah, I, I, I would give them my vote again until... We get to see what comes through the rest of these matches in the knockout stage. I feel yeah, what's like Guma got? Like, what's Pay's got? Masu. What's Pay's got Guma. You throw in Jackie Love. Hey, maybe Masu. You know, we're, we're cooking in the LCS. You never know. I think a couple ADC performances still left on the table uh, for this part of the event. Wave overs BLG all over again. How are you ready for the rerun of the script from last year? Is it going to be the same? Is it going to play it all out? I think, of course, we've had quite a bit of differences and changes and evolution and growth and ups and downs for both of these teams throughout this year to get back to this very same position that they were in last year. Again, BLG will be the overwhelming dominant favorite heading into this series, but that should be a cause for concern. That should be a lesson from last year, just kind of the way that T1 had to learn that lesson against DRX in the finals. And then they said, you know what? We ain't overlooking anybody in these knockout rounds the rest of the way through. Anybody can be lethal, can be dangerous on the day. BLG and Bin, they better be prepared for Weibo because you never know what's in store when you got Weibo on the other side. Yeah, again, it was the exact same story last year. BLG were the massive favorites. People were already writing about the T1 BLG finals that we're going to get. Weibo crashes that. At least it's a familiar memory for everybody but Knight on this BLG roster looking back to last year. So feel like they're going to be even more locked in than you would have thought. But uh, BLG coming up big on the day against Hanwha, delivering an absolute banger. We got the other two quarterfinals to wrap up on the weekend. And we will recap all that juicy action, talking about why FlyQuest is going to win the world championship on Monday. But that is it today for League Unlocked. Erica Mark with you, beauty. Thanks for hanging out as always, and you know we will catch you on that flippity flip.